Hi, I'm Kirby Allison, and I'm thrilled to be here in Havana, Cuba for the very first time visiting this beautiful city with several of my good friends and fellow cigar enthusiasts from London. We've come for the 23rd Festival del Havano, the most important event in the world for Cuban cigars, and of course, to explore the many examples of quality, craftsmanship, and tradition that are to be found within Cuban culture and amongst the people of this beautiful island. So join me as we travel to Havana, Cuba to explore the world of quality, craftsmanship, and tradition of this beautiful island and their incredible cigars. So here I am in San Juan y Martinez, which is widely considered one of the premier growing regions inside Delta Abajo. Today we have the distinct privilege of visiting with a local farmer named Raul Cruz Rodriguez, whose family has been farming this land for generations. The tobacco used in Habano cigars are grown using two different techniques, the sun-grown tobacco fields which grow the binder and filler leaves, and the shade-grown tobacco fields which create the Habanos' beautiful, pristine wrappers. Our journey today begins in Vuelta Abajo's beautiful sun-grown fields of Pinar de Rio, where the region's fertile soil, high humidity, and abundant sunshine create the ideal growing conditions for tobacco, allowing the leaves to develop the renowned full flavor and beautiful aromas. While the practice of cultivating tobacco may at first seem simple, there is a profound humility and respect embedded in every step. This honorable tradition is imbued with an intuition so deep that it can only be developed over generations passed down through the hands of Cuban farmers. So join me as we set off in search of quality, craftsmanship, and tradition. Ah, uh, Raul, ¿qué tal? ¿Cómo está? How is everything? Muchísimas gracias por todo. It's, a, it's an honor to be here in your beautiful tobacco field. Es un placer estar acá en esta plantación de tabaco. De verdad que sí, es preciosa. So this is where it all begins. This is the sun, famous Cuban sun-grown tobacco fields. Aquí es donde nace el tabaco. Yeah. This is where the tobacco is born. Una planta aquí de tabaco. As you can see, we have a tobacco plant right here. La estoy deshijando. So removing the stems of it to yeah. clean the plants in order to make the uh, the leaves even like greener and more prosperous. Mm -hmm. So how many months are, are these plants? Eh, ¿Qué tan mayores son estas plantas? ¿Qué edad tienen? Esta planta tiene hoy tiene 75 días. 75 days. Ah, okay. And how many more until all of the leaves are picked? ¿Y cuántas más hasta que se pueda cosechar como tal? Bueno, ella a los 54 días se le coge la libre pie. 54 days would be like uh, the sowing of it. Okay. De 54 días a 65, 70 se le coge el 1 y medio. Basically, uh, from 54 days, 54 días sería la primera recogida, la primera recogida. the first sowing okay. of the leaves uh, closer to the bottom of the okay. of the plant. Then, uh, 65 days ahead would be the sowing of the leaves right in the middle. So after the you remove the the middle of it. Since so like 65 days, you remove the sun over the top. The so, top. Yeah. And so the, the top leaf, you know, is the one that is receiving the most sun. And so why is it important to pick them at different times? 
en momentos diferentes porque el problema es que la planta se va, se va haciendo de abajo hacia arriba. The plants, the y a la, from the to up. Mm -hmm. a la medida que usted va recogiendo la hoja de abajo y va recogiendo la de arriba, esta hoja So what you saw, like sowing the plants from the bottom to the top, you allow the plant to grow even like stronger. Ah, okay. It allows you to get more protein, to grow like way better. Yeah. And so which is the most prized leaf? Is it this last one that's picked? So the one at the bottom would be the one that is not that pricey. So it's like according to, as the plant starts like growing, the ones on the top will be the the one like it, like the priceless yeah. ones. The highest quality for the leaves uh, in order to smoke it would be from the very center yeah. to the top. To the top. Okay. The highest quality. Da la mejor calidad de tabaco y tiene mejor mejor sabor en todo. It provides a better quality to the tobacco mm -hmm. and enhances incredibly well the flavor as yeah. well. In this area, I mean, of course, Cuba is renowned, world renowned for producing the best tobacco in the world. So what is it kind of about this soil, about this sun, about this climate. El clima y, y la tierra. The weather, the earth, the soil. Todas las tierras no, no te dan el mismo sabor de tabaco. Not every single land provides you the same flavor of tobacco, yeah. so. Principalmente el, el tabaco aquí en San Juan de Martínez era muy bueno. Mainly the tobacco in this specific area in San Juan de Martínez provides a very, very good flavor. Yeah, uh, in this land, I mean, how long have you been working this land? ¿Cuánto tiempo llevas trabajando esta tierra? Desde niño, con mis abuelos. Ah, uh, since his grandfathers, ah, really? grandparents, yeah. Wow. Since he was a kid. Really. Uh, and, es and una tradición de familia. It's a long tradition in his family. Yeah. And, and, and all with your hands. Y todo con tus propias manos. Todo con tus propias manos. Yes, definitely. So what is the special care, you know, of a farmer? I mean, you know, you're the one that is looking after these leaves, you know, from their birth. It begins as a preparation of the very soil, so yeah. you put your love into it. Preparas el suelo bien y siembras la planta y de ahí para allá es a cuidado. Cada vez que tienes que hacerle algo es a planta, planta. Every single time that you have to do something is a very, very specific care from one plant to the other plant. It's like taking care of a garden, basically. Yeah. It's a daily task. Everything that you do is from one plant to the other plant, but taking into consideration that it's like the very, very tiniest aspect of it. Mm -hmm. Even the leaves, the roots, the this, this, this soil. Yeah. It's like an extra care, yeah. basically. And what is it about the dirt? I mean, we've got the red soil, right? And I mean, this is so much a part of Cuban tobacco is the, the tierra, you know, the, the ground. So this land would be considered a first degree or first yeah. grade land. It's not too sandy, it's not specifically like a red or, mm -hmm. a, it's like a, re, like a regular, but at the same time it has a strong component of like, it has a strong body, the earth. Yeah. So it would be like one of the best first degree like yeah. land in order to build its effect, in order yeah. to enhance the flavor. Because Vuelta Abajo is famous and within that you have San Juan y Martinez, which is this area. Okay, Vuelta Abajo is extremely we... famous, like with respect to its soil. And now we have, then, it would be inside Vuelta Abajo, San Juan y Martinez. Yeah. And then we have your farm, you know, this land that you've been working in your family now for three generations. And your children, are they, will they be following in your footsteps? Seguirán tu paso. Sí, tengo uno que está conmigo aquí en la vida. Yeah, definitely. He yeah. actually has one, which is like currently like working here in the, in, the, in the farm as well. Yeah. So how much of this land, you know, are you farming, you know, yourself specifically, your small? ¿Cuánto de esta granja como tal estás trabajando tú específicamente? 160,000 posturas. 160,000 plants. Wow. Okay. That's incredible. Yeah. Wow. I think it's so special about Cuban tobacco is how, you know, a Cuban cigar is really a product of the people the people that make it, uh, the people that, you know, pick the, you know, the tobacco leaves that spend, you know, their, you know, not just their, you know, their lifetime, but generations looking after this land and this tobacco. And then it goes and it's, you know, cured, dried, rolled, you know, todo a mano. There's also an element of Cuban heritage to this and that it's not just a new industry that's just been planted over the last 20 or 30 years, but Cuban tobacco has been farmed on this land, 
you know, for 150, 200 plus years. Bueno, yo empecé con, con mi abuelo aquí a la edad de ocho años. Con él. So he started at the age of eight years old with his grandfather. Enseñándome en todo lo que yo sé de ahora del tabaco. He taught de, him every single thing that he knows about tobacco. Que hoy en día hoy me doy cuenta que lo que me enseñó eh, And nowadays he realizes that every single element that he was taught was incredibly useful for him. Yeah. Porque gracias a él logro siempre las plantaciones de tabaco que tengo año por año. Because of him, every single year he has excellent results and he's very appreciative about that knowledge. Yeah. I mean, that's what I think is so incredible about, you know, Cuban tobacco, about Habanos, is that, you know, the sum is so much greater than the parts. I mean, not just from the growing, the curing, you know, the blending and the rolling, but also the fact that, you know, it's been a continuous tradition here, stretching generations. De que, de que tú lo siembras, cuando tú lo siembras, eh, él, tiene, él tiene etapas que tú tienes que darle el golpe que lleva en ese momento. Since the very beginning trabajo. that you start, like, uh, with, with the seeds and the growing of the plants, you have a, a very specific golden moment mm -hmm. in which you need to seize that opportunity in order to get the most out of it. Yeah. El que, cuando, el que sabe un poquito de tabaco sabe que cuando tú la, la planta la, tú la siembra, ella misma te va diciendo las etapas que tú tienes que darle el golpe de ella, ¿me entiendes? So it is a manner of knowing how to listen to the plants yeah. because we'll be the plant, the one that tells you mm -hmm. what are the next steps, what are the next tasks yeah. that you need to fulfill, or do you need to and you need to accomplish. Yeah. And is that an intuition? Is that just a hand for the plants? Is it? Un conocimiento, tener el conocimiento para llevar la planta a esa It would be o... knowledge and experience. Yeah. It is a job that starts since like the very beginning. It's not a matter of one year. It's something that it keeps building up. That's yeah. why the people that start working on the fields starts like from early ages as so, like an internship, yeah. as an apprenticeship. Yeah. And what was the conversation, you know, with your grandfather as he was, you know, apprenticing you through this land? You know, what were the lessons, what were the kind of intuitions that he imparted on you that you want to impart onto your children? Bueno, ese tipo de conocimiento eh, se lo voy enseñando yo al niño mío en la práctica, trabajando conmigo al lado mío. Le digo, mira, niño. That's the kind of knowledge he starts, like, providing to his sons uh, since, the, like, the very practical aspect of it. Mm -hmm. Él al lado mío, yo lo voy enseñando cómo se botó una mata de tabaco. It, it is a job that would be like extremely close one another. They are both watching carefully. They are both touching carefully. They are just paying extra attention. It would be about everything. It's the caring of the field, the caring of the leaf, the caring of the plants. So the very plant starts talking and basically every single conversation is the plants. Yeah. You just need to learn how to listen and that would be the main aspect of the conversation and that's the main knowledge that his grandfather provide him and he is providing to his son. Yeah. Uh, you know, it's a real profession of tradition. I mean, it is passed on from one generation to the next, person to person. When you look at this land, Cuando miras esta tierra, and you see these beautiful tobacco, you know, come out of the ground and kind of reaching up towards the Cuban sunlight. What is, what is the moment that gives you the greatest satisfaction of not just doing your job well, ¿Cuál but es really honoring? Que te da la mayor satisfacción. Yeah. Sé que no es solamente hacer tu trabajo. Yeah. But, but honoring Cuban tradition and Cuban heritage si and no culture. Sino también honrar esa tradición, honrar ese patrimonio como tal cubano. Bueno, yo me acuerdo mucho cuando ya yo veo la plantación así, ver cuando so, me acuerdo cuando mi abuelo estaba en ella. Every single day he remembers de, uh, his grandfather uh, and he feels pride of doing the job right. Of seeing how like that level of beauty in front of him. It's like he is giving something back. Yeah. Y el amor que uno siente, porque esto es lo que me gusta a mí. And of course, doing something that you love makes the entire difference would be it means the world to him yeah it's such a beautiful and and in many ways such an honest and pure profession and way of work una profesión pura es una profesión amorosa es una profesión muy honesta 
he feels extremely proud of having this. He has a higher sense of accomplishment. Yeah. I mean, it is such a product of, you know, of the earth, of the land, but then also how the people and their cultural knowledge are able to work those two things together. To, and all this beautiful nature and all of the climate and everything that changes month over month, year over year, to produce these beautiful tobacco plants. Everything has to do with the, with the amount of effort and the amount of love that you provide to the, the action or the work that you do, yeah. basically. Yeah, incredible. And so as you're, you know, kind of listening to the plant, you know, feeling it, watching it. Y mientras escuchas a la planta, mientras la sientes, mientras la observas. Yeah. Then you're picking the leaves, starting at the bottom, working all the way to the top. Y estás cosechando las hojas como tal, comenzando desde el fondo hasta la, hasta la cima como tal. And then once we pick those leaves, you know, where do they go to next in their journey to becoming a Habanos cigar? Va directo a la casa cultivo. It would be straight ahead to the, to the dry hut, as we can see on the right. Okay. And so this is where then the leaves go to dry. When they dry, they stack them, and then we deliver to the center, which is in charge of making the, the whole process. Wow. So here we are. These are famous leaves. Estas serían las famosas hojas de tabaco. And so what is it, you know, as you feel and smell these leaves that have you know they're ready to move on to the next part of this journey? ¿Qué es lo que te hace sentir que estas hojas están listas para seguir a, a, próximo, a la próxima etapa de su viaje como tal? El color. So the El first color thing would be the color of the leaves. Mm -hmm. Ya está cambiando el color. As you can see, the color is already changing. El, el, la textura de la hoja. The texture as well of the leaves. As you can see, it's a thicker leaves. Que ya ya cuando ella ya está en el proceso ya de que ya está hecha, se le ve un color color amarillito claro así arriba de la hoja. You can see it, the leaf when the leaf starts as changing the color and it starts like embracing this yellowish color. It starts like uh, calling the attention uh, of the farmer. So like right here. El lateral de la hoja, la punta aquí arriba, te va diciendo que ya la hoja está. The very point of the leaf tells you that it's getting ready, that it's yeah. actually ready to be taken. Mm -hmm. And then I guess how many times, you know, throughout the growing season will you pick and take into the, the drying barn? Se llevaría la hoja the campo four times four times four times four times during a temporada dentro de una temporada starting at Después the bottom ya es el secado cuando está ya secado que sí hay que zafarlo mm. hay que alisar la hoja para que cuando la pongas en el pilón te quede bien puesto mm. y que no tenga fuga de de vapor para que mantenga la humedad then we follow the process of the curing barn. Mm -hmm. The process of curing inside yeah. the, the curing barn, basically. Mm -hmm. Yeah. And the stringing of it. Yeah. And does every farm have its own curing barn, or is this something that is afforded to only special? Every single farm has its own curing farm, barn. And is each farmer responsible for the curing of the tobacco as well? El campesino, el, sí. el productor es responsable de, de la curación de ese tabaco. Yeah, el... the tobacco grower would be the sole responsible of the whole process. Yeah. Can we see it? Vamos a ver. Podemos ver. Ah, gracias. Esta es la casa de cura de mi tabaco. Wow. I, I mean, it's, uh, 
already so full of tobacco and you're not even halfway done with the harvest. Este está ahí en la casa de cura donde se lleva el proceso del tabaco. Wow. So this will be the, the campo para acá. Uh, the next step in the journey of tobacco leaf. Wow, this is incredible. It's already so full. Look at these leaves. It reminds me of the uh, the last room at, uh, at John Lobb. Wow, it's incredible. How does it feel? I mean, whenever you walk in here. El olor de buena cara que no entendí nada de lo que me dijo. Cuida cada vez que entro aquí. El olor de este tabaco me recuerda mucho al abuelo mío cuando él entraba aquí a las casas de cura verde y, y él decía que el olor, mm. le decía que el tabaco estaba curando, porque tenía una buena esencia que estaba curando bien. Mm. El color de la hoja cuando está. And this is, I mean, completely natural. I mean, again, todo, todo a mano, but also todo de, you know, tierra y, in, you know, of the, of the climate. I mean, there's no... Todo es completamente natural. O sea que la tierra, la madera, las hojas, el clima, todo aquí es natural. Every single aspect of it, of the curing barn, it's natural. Wood, soil, el movimiento, el ensarte, todo. The movement, the springing, everything is done by hand, leaf by leaf. La mujer lo ensarta. It is a craft. Para pal, y el obrero lo coge hoja. Yeah. So the woman and the worker like do it like both. It's like a whole process that yeah. work together one as one. Yeah. And so you bring the leaves in and then they're strung together and then just hung on a long rod to dry. And for how long is that, is that taking? 45 days. 45 days. Okay. So at the end of that 45 days, is this leaf's journey on your farm complete? No. Viene el proceso de oh, zafar. Yeah. So the process of this ringing, of removing the, the leaves from the wood, like... Uh, se, le, se quita de arriba el cuje y se zafa. So se you remove gavilla. it from the cuje and you just se hacen take it out. Y se llevan un proceso Make it stacks. De pilón. Mm. And then you do the process of pilón. Ah, okay. And is that fermentation the secondary? I mean, I guess when it's hung, it's the first fermentation. Segunda fermentación. Would be the second fermentation. And for how long is that? ¿Y cuánto tiempo duraría? Un mes. One month. Uh, 30 días. Okay. Or 30 days. Okay. So it's over almost three months in this curing barn Así after the tobacco has been picked. Así que las hojas tendrían un, un tiempo de duración como tal en el proceso de curado de tres meses aproximadamente acá, dentro, en la casa de curado. Sí. Yeah. Three months. Yeah. And where does the hand come into this? I mean, I would imagine that just like out in the farm, there's an intuition of listening to the leaves to know when they need to be picked. Whenever they're in here drying, is that same skill involved, that kind of intuition, that cultural knowledge? Bueno, aquí determina hasta el olor. Dentro de la caja de abajo, Once you get in, que te da, mean, you can feel the smell. El de ese, be the first que estamos como que está curando. Mm -hmm. So that's a proper smell. That means it's curating. Y moverlo. Tienes que constantemente estar moviendo los cujes, separándolos. But of course, you would have clima, to keep constantly moving. El clima en ese momento. This tax, taking into consideration the weather and the color of the leaves as well. Okay. Bueno, el, dentro de la caja de abajo, Hay que estar moviendo los cujes, sacudiéndolos. Inside the curing barn, you have to keep moving constantly. Para que las hojas no se peguen. In order to make the leaves not stuck together. Para que esté ventilándose constantemente. To provide this level of like a ventilation and humidity, which allows the product to be perfect. A la hora de de zafar, tienes que ver que la humedad sea la correspondiente, porque si lo zafas con demasiada humedad y lo metes en la fermentación, puede pudrirse dentro de un kilo. If you take them down without the proper level of humidity, you can compromise the whole process. So it's very, 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 like, you need to be very aware of it. Yeah. I mean, one of the things that I see, you know, on this island is how time is not rushed. And whenever I think of, you know, your work in the field, and then your work in here in the curing barn and the drying and the fermentation, that time is allowed to pass by slowly and not be rushed. Dedicación. So it would be about dedication. Mm -hmm. que dedicarle mucho tiempo. It's about dedicating a lot of time. It's sacrifice. Yeah. It's about sacrifices. And cuando está aquí dentro de la casa tabaco, no tiene sábado, no tiene domingo. No so tiene you nada. have no Sundays, you have no Saturdays. It's yeah. like a 24-7 gig, basically. Yeah. yeah, it's like watching after one's, one's children. 
es como prestarle atención o cuidar en un infante, un niño. And uh, nothing is rushed. I mean, this is allowed to, you know, this tobacco is allowed to just really kind of take its time to develop uh, as it was meant to from the beginning. Nada se apura. Siempre no. se toman su tiempo. Todo tiene su tiempo. Everything has a proper timing and it's followed. That's yeah. it. Yeah. So whenever you uh, are finished with the, the pilans, right? The, is that right? The, the pilans? The pilon. Yeah. Pilon. Process that involves the pilon, which okay. is basically gathering every single like leaf. Once you remove it from the, like, from the wooden poles, mm -hmm. um, you put it over a platform yeah. that could be like, uh, uh, you, many people, uh, many like workers or farmers or vegueros use like jagua, which is this fiber which protects the uh, La Palma Real, mm -hmm. the royal palm tree. Okay. And then just like, uh, eh, se dejan ahí aproximadamente cuánto tiempo? 30 días. 30 days, mm -hmm. so that would be the, the process of the pilon. Yeah. Y después del pilon, ¿qué cosa es lo que sucede? De ese proceso de apilamiento. De ese proceso de apilamiento nosotros hacemos eh, las pacas y se la entregamos al centro de... And after that, they joint the, the cigar leaves, mm -hmm. uh, the tobacco leaves in stacks, yeah. and they take it to the process, like the processing center, yeah. right? And so whenever these leaves have completed their journey with you, uh, you know, is there a sense of satisfaction or is there a, is there a sentiment kind of as they leave and go on to the next kind of part in their process? Bueno. Me siento bien. It feels good. Me siento bien y, y a la vez eh, tanto esfuerzo que se le puso a, a ese tabaco que va a salir. It's a little bit of contradictory eh, feelings because yeah. it is a lot of effort, a lot of time. Do you take a rest at the end of that? Is your work done for a few months or? Tomas algún descanso una vez que entregas las hojas. Tal vez sí. tienes algunos meses. De... Tengo un descanso hasta el nuevo agosto que se vuelve a empezar de nuevo. Until August, that everything starts all over again. Aproximadamente, ¿cuánto tiempo sería? De que termino a más o menos cinco meses. Sería cinco meses de descanso. Five months of rest. But I would imagine that during that time you're still nurturing the soil. Yes. Yeah. Wow, Raúl. Thank you so much for sharing your life and your passion. Muchísimas gracias por compartir tu vida y tus pasiones. And for welcoming me and uh, everyone watching on our channel and to your beautiful farm. It's an incredible honor. Muchísimas gracias. Gracias, señor. As we leave the sun-soaked fields of Pinar de Rio, it's hard not to be struck by the reverence with which the deep-rooted traditions define the life of farmers like Raúl Cruz Rodríguez. This is a place where the time-honored techniques honor not just the land, but the history and culture of the Cuban people. Every leaf tells a story, a story of quality, craftsmanship, and tradition passed down from generation to generation. But while the tradition forms the heart and soul of Cuban tobacco farming, innovation and science are its backbone, ensuring that these age-old practices not only survive changes in the climate, but constantly improve to produce yet better and better tobacco. Up next, our journey takes us to the San Juan y Martinez Tobacco Experimental Station. Here, the guardians of Cuban tobacco focus on evolving the crop for future generations. From developing disease-resistant strains to studying the impacts of climate change, their work is vital in preserving and enhancing the unique characteristics that make Cuban cigars unparalleled in quality. Ah, Nelson. Ah, con mucho gusto. El gusto es mío. Yeah. Gracias por todo. And the greatest of pleasures, and thank yeah. you so much. Gracias a ustedes por estar acá en la estación de tabaco de San Juan y Martínez. Thank you for being here in the experimental station of San Juan and Martínez that belongs to Tabacuba. Yeah, well, thank you for welcoming us. We had an incredible visit uh, out to the tobacco fields, to the sun-grown uh, farm in San Juan y Martínez. Nos satisface mucho que así sea. We are very happy of that, yeah. of that being the case. Yeah, and you know, one of the things that I was struck by is just the history and the heritage of Cuba tobacco. I mean, stretching back 150 plus years 
And you have the land, the soil, you know, the climate, and most importantly, the people that are cultivating this incredible Habanos tobacco. Uh, how is it that your station, this experimental station, uh, is charged with, you know, really protecting this and keeping that quality, uh, you know, where everyone has come to, to know it? Bueno, como bien sabe y no explica, eh, la calidad del Habano está the determinada. The quality of cigar and Habanos. Eh, por cuatro factores fundamentales. It's determined by four different factors. Okay. Que se combinan de una manera perfecta. That para combines dar. perfectly in order to provide. Ese sabor, ese aroma, esas características que distinguen a Habano. That smell, Habana. that flavor, that like aroma that allows everyone to love that product. En tal sentido, eh, está el suelo. In such a way, there is a floor, the el soil, clima, the weather, el hombre, the man himself, mm -hmm. y el tipo de tabaco que cultivamos. And the kind of tobacco that they grow yeah. as well. Y la estación como centro de investigación encargado de And experimental station, which is mainly the core, it is uh, the, the spine of this experimentation process. Yeah. Esta cualidad de nuestro principal producto. It is a quality that goes with the product. Yeah. Eh, tiene varias líneas de trabajo. Yeah. That goes with several lines of work, of course. Yeah. Eh, se trabaja en primer lugar con el hombre que es el que debe hacer y saber hacer. First of all, we start working with the man himself, mm -hmm. with the worker. He needs mm -hmm. to know. Y es quien transmite de generación en generación esa cultura que ha transmitido. And he is the one that transmits that from generation to generation that maintains that very like a, a heirloom. Yeah, the tradition. The tradition. En tal sentido hay un sistema de asesoría permanente. In such a way there is a consultancy system already in charge. A, in a nuestros productores. Related with their own tobacco growers. Yeah. En Linked. todas las formas de cultivo. Mm -hmm que dan un lugar a la elaboración de ese puro. Related with every single possible way in order to make that cigar the best option. Nos referimos al tabaco sol ensaltado. They are talking specifically to the spring cigar mm -hmm. ensaltado. Que se utiliza en las tripas y los capotes en los so interiores. So they use tripas o capote, basically the insides and the wrapping. Yeah. Y al tabaco cultivado bajo tela. And the one which is uh, grown under, like, it's protected yeah. under the shade. Destinado a la, a la capa de, de exportación. Mm. Basically oriented to exportation. Yeah. Relacionado con el tipo de tabaco que cultivamos, muy... Related with the kind of tobacco that we grow with. Es esencial el trabajo que realizamos It is essential, the kind of work that we do. La conservación de las características with genéticas. With the conservation, not only of the genetic characteristics, de cada una de nuestras variedades of every single variety a partir de la producción de la de las categorías starting from the production of every single category mm. eh, superiores de, de esa semilla superiors of every single seedling yeah. semilla original y the semilla original básica original seed and the basic seed yeah. y en esta línea también se trabaja la creación and de, in such a line we also work in the creation de nuevas variedades of new varieties mm. Con, eh, que en primer lugar, in the first place, conserven las características organolépticas que that they maintain the organolectic characteristic that identified such eh, a product. A nuestros habanos. Specifically, tobacco. Y que, eh, deben ser resistentes. And they are meant to be resistant. A las principales enfermedades. To the main plagues that is stroke them. Que afectan al cultivo en Cuba. That affect them. Y, en cierta medida, con mayor adaptabilidad In a las condiciones climáticas climate action. imperantes en la actualidad. Yeah. In today's world. Desde el punto de vista del suelo, From a point of view of the, of the soil, se trabaja toda una línea de mejoramiento y conservación we work in a line of conservation and improvement. con el empleo de varias, varias, eh, de varias enmiendas, por decirlo de alguna manera. Of several amendments. Yeah. Se, se trabaja con cultivos mejoradores. Improvement like uh, growth uh, products. Yeah. Las aplicaciones de, de materia orgánica. The application of organic matter. Para tratar de mantener lo que es la estructura y esa... In order to maintain the structure, and the capacity, and the fertility of the soil. Yeah. Nuestro suelo en este caso. Y bueno, algo que se escapa de nuestras manos Something son las condiciones climáticas. Something that usually climáticas. escapes from the very power of our hands. Yeah. So, 
it would be the actions of the weather. So yeah. it is sometimes unpredictable. Yeah. No obstante, para la producción de capas eh, o envolturas de los puros. In order to uh, start the work regarding the wrappings of the cigars. Mm -hmm. Se trabajan las líneas de curación controlada. They work on these like creating lines, mm -hmm. control enhance creating lines. Mm -hmm. Con lo cual logramos aislar ese proceso de las afectaciones climáticas. By means which we try to improve that specific element of climate uh, affectations. Yeah. Y en el cual se logra obtener una mayor eficiencia desde el punto de vista de, de producción de capa para el proceso de producción. Thanks to that process, we actually had a major improvement regarding the production of those coverings of yeah. those like wrapping. And, and what is an improvement? A ver, eh, la mejoría se habla en el hecho de haber podido continuar con la producción de tabaco. The fact that the improvement would be just being able to continue the production of tobacco, yeah. it's a major improvement yeah. because when the weather strikes, that would be like yeah. a major well, losses would be involved. Yeah. Pues la variedad criollo tradicional como so se le llama. The variety of criollo tradicional, which mm -hmm. is how we call it. Eh, fue imposible su cultivo a partir del año 92. It was impossible to grow until year 1992. Wow. Por la alta susceptibilidad que mostró esta esta variedad. Because the high level of affection that they had to because of those kind of like problems. Yeah. Ahora enfermedad conocida vulgarmente. So we have a plague that is known commonly as. Como moho azul. Moho azul, blue okay. moho. Okay. Y ese año fue muy favorable para nosotros porque pudimos. And that year was incredibly favorable for us. Eh, comenzar la introducción de no, dos nuevas variedades. Because we could start uh, the creation of two different varieties mm. that allow us to continue with the growth of the black tobacco, mm. as it's known. And to keep every single aspect that is known about the tobacco, mm -hmm. its good things and also the joinment of the new things. Yeah. Thanks to that, we can have. De un grupo de variedades. A new group of varieties. Con características organolépticas. With organolépticas characteristics extremely similar. Mm. Al criollo tradicional. To the traditional criollo. Y a la variedad corojo tradicional que fue. And the variety of corojo tradicional. Que se utilizaba para envoltura. That was used to, in order to get the wrappings. Mm -hmm. Lo cual permite trazar estrategias. Con diferentes variedades. And that allowed to create strategies in order to combine them with different varieties. Mm. En caso de que se afecte una, poder lograr algún nivel de producción. In case that one of the varieties becomes affected, mm -hmm. then we would have the possibility to redirect the efforts in order yeah. to succeed, basically. So always planning a little bit ahead of climate Así change. Que, sí, correcto. Y lo, y lo, lo estudiamos. And of course, we studied deeply. Se estudia el comportamiento de cada una de nuestras variedades. We studied the behavior of every single variety that we developed. Mm -hmm. En las diferentes condiciones climáticas. In every single climate uh, conditions que existen en Cuba. That exist in Cuba. Yeah. Porque no solo se estudian por haber sido lograda aquí en la estación. It's not only the fact that we create them and that's why we study mm -hmm. them here. Se estudian en las diferentes regiones tabacaleras. It is Cuba. studied in every single tobacco region in Cuba. Mm -hmm. Y eso nos permite tener una apreciación. And that allows us to have an appreciation, yeah. a criteria. En las diferentes condiciones climáticas que existen. Regarding the different climatic. Yeah. Además de que uh, realities that exist. Besides that, we have studies here at the station in order to realize how it affects en las diferentes épocas de trasplante que hoy different en like uh, growing seasons yeah. that exist in Cuba. Épocas tempranas, épocas medias, y New épocas season, tardías. medium season, and later season. Yeah. Y cómo se comportan ante las enfermedades que existen hoy. And how they behave and they react to new plagues mm -hmm. and sicknesses that en affect them. En esas etapas. And in such uh, para states. Para poder trazar las estrategias. In order to make these strategies that would allow yeah. us to adapt. Que le dan adapt. respuesta a las necesidades de, de, de los productores. Yeah. That actually provides the growers mm -hmm. with options in order to adapt. Yeah. Uh, in a cigar like this incredible Cohiba uh, Bojica 54, I mean, how many varieties of tobacco are being blended into a cigar, you know, in any given year? In the case of the tobacco negro, the most important thing in the case of the black tobacco would be the most important aspect would be. Ya que todas las variedades que se cultivan acá. Every single variety that is grown here. 
conservan las características organolépticas. They keep the organolectic characteristic yeah. of the cigar, so it's basically a mirror image. Yeah. Lo más importante en este caso no es la variedad, sino el the tipo most important de hoja. aspect is not going to be the variety, but mm -hmm. the type of leaf. O la posición de la hoja en la planta. But the position of the leaf regarding yeah. the plants. Para ser destinada. In order to be destined to fail. A la producción de, de un coiva. To the production of a coiva. Yeah. Pero básicamente tiene que ser con hoja de los municipios de San But Juan. Basically needs to belong. The leaves need to belong to the municipalities of San Juan, los San Luis. Interiores. The interior part. Mm -hmm. Y la capa. Puede ser de otra región. And the cave or the wrapping could be from a different region, mm -hmm. but that would be the main formula regarding that yeah. specific brand. It's a vuelta abajo y partido, right? Eh, está en vuelta abajo. En vuelta abajo. Yeah. Okay. San Juan y San Luis. San es Juan el corazón de La Habana. That would be, it's mainly called the heart of Habana. Yeah. So it's just a small, small region within the overall. Es una pequeña región dentro de toda esa. Muy, muy pequeña comparado yeah. con lo que se cultiva. It's yeah. very, very small, taking into consideration the yeah. amount of products and plants that yeah. they have. Yeah, and so it's those regions that produce the best tobacco, and it is only the best tobacco that is rolled into a Habano cigar. Cuando se habla de Habano, evidentemente estamos hablando de acá. When we talk about Habano, we have to talk about this place. That's yeah. it. That's it, yeah. La única tripa y el capote. Para the only Habano, inside of the tripa o capote. Mm -hmm. Se ordena acá, donde le expliqué. Would be like here. San Juan, that's San it. Luis. San Juan, San Luis. And that's it. Y una pequeña zona del de municipio de Pinar del Río que es el contiguo a nosotros. And a tiny additional area which is like extremely close to us mm -hmm. would be a, another like a possibility in order yeah. to get them. But that's it. we are the heart. Yeah. yeah. And so there's much more tobacco grown in Cuba than the tobacco, the select tobacco, the best tobacco that's used in a Habano cigar. Bueno, el hecho de, de producirse en Cuba, de hecho, lleva un sello. Just the fact of being growth in Cuba accompanies the brand with a marking. That's mm -hmm. it. Hay, hay eh, otras regiones en Cuba. There are different regions, yeah. regions here in Cuba. Que tienen buenas características. Uh, the cigar has, like, good characteristics. Mm -hmm. Y de hecho, prácticamente todo el tabaco negro que se cultiva en Cuba. Practically, most of the black tobacco that we grow here in Cuba. Mm -hmm. Suele reunir mejores características organolépticas. It usually has like the best organolectic characteristics. Que otras regiones del mundo. Of different regions in the world. So yeah. Cuba is a very gifted region yeah. and a very gifted country in order to grow tobacco. Yeah. Sin embargo, para nosotros ha sido un, una bendición. However, for us, it's been a blessing. Que San Juan y San Luis sean. And San Juan y San Luis been. Los únicos municipios. The only municipalities con la posición oeste del municipio de Pinal del Río. With the west a uh, uh, possibility of the, municip the municipality of Pinal del Río. Yeah. Que puedan producir una hoja para habanos. That can produce an actual leaf for habanos. Yeah. Cuando usted le dice a un cliente o a una persona entendida, when habanos. You talk, when you talk with the customer mm -hmm. and that individual knows about cigars mm -hmm. and knows about tobacco, Automáticamente se identifica. It automatically identifies con esta región. This yeah. specific region. Yeah. You know, so many other places have attempted to replicate the quality characteristics of a, you know, of a Habano cigar. Hmm. But they've been okay. they've been unable to do that yet. There's okay, still something which, uh, special. Nosotros hemos estado al tanto. They have been tracking the accomplishments mm -hmm. or uh, and the evolution of every single region that have been trying to mm -hmm. devote the efforts in order to make better. Yeah. People with extreme knowledge yeah. have tried. Yeah. They even trans like uh, transported the new varieties, mm -hmm. new kind of seeds. On our first day. Uh, they even like uh, took soil yeah. to en the experimentation. There was no success yeah. regarding those strategies. It was impossible to replicate a similar Otro. quality. Yeah. No se pudieron llevar el clima. So yeah. it's impossible. You can take the soils, you can take the seed, but you cannot replicate weather. Yeah. There are regions that had a very, very similar soil. Mm -hmm. Pero la cultura entonces del hombre también juega su papel. But the very culture of man 
plays a very significant role in the making of bueno, such a product. Por eso nosotros hablamos de una integración casi perfecta de esos cuatro factores. That's why we usually talk about an integration between mm. those four factors. Yeah. Y aún con los mayores adelantos científicos técnicos no se ha podido igualar. And even taking into consideration this like a very high advanced scientific and technical improvements, yeah. they haven't been able to yeah. get that replication yeah. happen. Y es algo muy natural. And it's a very, very natural thing to do, at least for us. Yeah. Yeah, I mean, it's fascinating here in Cuba, you know, that you've got, you know, such an incredible combination of the, of the soil, of the earth, but also the mano, you know, the man, the hands. Uh, and again, not just the hands, but, you know, the fact that, you know, this tradition has been passed on for generations. Uh, you know, it really is combining all the characteristics of this beautiful country and island, you know, into a product that represents, you know, really the best, the best of Cuba. Yeah. Well, thank you, totally agree. Nelson, for everything. Muchísimas gracias and, uh, por todo. you know, for sharing your incredible knowledge and for doing Muchísimas your work. Muchísimas gracias por compartir tu conocimiento. You know, to keep the uh, Cuban tobacco strong and available for us that, you know, truly, truly appreciate this incredible product. Mm. Gracias por esta oportunidad. Yeah. Thank you gracias. for that opportunity as well. As we depart from the tobacco experimental station of San Martin, it's clear that the scientific endeavors here are more than just lab work. They're a commitment to protecting a legacy that spans over 150 years and ensuring its continuity for the enjoyment of future generations. Next, we meet up with Hunters and Francao to travel to ABT Lorazo Pena in the region of Partido. Here, we explore the shade-grown tobacco fields, which specialize in cultivating the pristine wrapper leaves that grace each Habano cigar. It is here that meticulous attention ensures that the leaves grow large and uniform, a testament to the dedication to ensure that every cigar is every bit a visual masterpiece as it is a sensory one. What an incredible privilege to be here today in the Partido region of Cuba. Uh, this is one of the two areas that are designated uh, to uh, exclusively grow the tobacco used in a Cuban cigar. Uh, we are at ABT Larazo Pena, which is a group of 21 different cooperatives uh, that all grow tobacco uh, for uh, Cuba Tobacco, which is the company that manages the production of tobacco before it is handed over to Habanos to be rolled and made uh, into one of the most incredible cigars in the world. Today, we've had the privilege of meeting with Hermando Trujillo Gonzalez, uh, which is a legend within the tobacco industry. Uh, he's been awarded one of the Habanos Awards in production for his incredible work. Uh, he's been in this industry for 41 years with 40 harvests, 30 of which have been right here. The amount of work and care that goes into the cultivation of the tobacco used in a Habano cigar is already incredible, as we saw at Huerta Abajo. Uh, but the work that goes into a wrapper leaf requires even more care to produce the pristine, uh, the perfect, and the beautiful wrappers that we have come to expect in a Habano cigar. Next, we're going to head over to the sorting barns, uh, which is where the tobacco, after it's been dried, is sorted, and learn about this part in the process. So I hope you're enjoying this incredible journey we're on here as we explore the world of quality, craftsmanship, and tradition. So here we are in ABT La Raza Pena, uh, one of the most famous areas in Cuba uh, for the growth of tobacco and specifically for the growth of one of the most prized leaves, which is the wrapper leaf. I'm here today with Armando Trujillo Gonzalez. Uh, he has been working in this industry, growing tobacco for 41 years. This is his 40th harvest and his 30th here in this region, uh, a true expert uh, and master in the world of Cuban cigars at Havanos, and just one of the many reasons why Cuban tobacco continues to reign supreme uh, within the world of cigars. Con mucho gusto, gracias por todo. And uh, it's, uh, it's such an honor to have been welcomed by you uh, onto this incredible plantation. Well, there is another strategy, which is the rotation of the soil. And it's done in a two per two years basis. It means that this plantation next year will not be planted and not the next one. So until the other year, that's the moment that you will see plantation of tobacco again in this field. And as part of this strategy, 
and also uh, address it to protect the soil and do not hurt it. So we use also what we call rotation cultivations, like yuca, like banana, and some other uh, uh, products that are very rich in certain substances like nitrogen or something like that. Excuse me, how much does the, how much uh, time is left between planting a field of tobacco leaves like this? Two years. So they, so they do one year tobacco, one year no. yucca, one year banana, one year tobacco. And the next one tobacco, correct, exactly. This was a general overview of the, the main core of, of the productive process up to this uh, moment. And here, this irrigation system, it is called dropping system or dropping irrigation. Se logró con ella, con esta introducción de tecnología, rebajar la cantidad de hombres por hectárea. With this technology, it was possible to decrease, to reduce the amount of people per hectare. Por ejemplo, este campo, esta área que está aquí, que son 5.51 hectáreas, se regó anoche con dos hombres. For instance, this plantation, which is 5.51 hectares, it was totally irrigated yesterday at night with just two people. It means that instead of using this system, they will be using the other one, the old one, it would have taken four days to four men to get irrigated the whole plantation. And the water that we use have a pH level of 7.51. So they are really compelled to use the water rationally because otherwise... Si no estamos limitando ya el suelo en su productividad. Otherwise, we will be reducing the productivity of the soil. Otra ventaja, los fertilizaciones químicas que con pequeñas dosis también se pueden realizar por el sistema también de, de riego cocoteo. Another advantage is the, what is called uh, chemical fertilization method, which also can be used using this same uh, system. Dropping the water, but also fertilizing at the same time. Hoy, esta tecnología le falta un elemento. Today, we're missing one element of this technology. Que es el producto en boque. It's a product, it's a chemical product called en boque. Sí, es una herbicida fabricada en el norte, en Estados Unidos. It's a herbicide. Uh, manufacturer in America, que es para el control de la planta parásita Orobanche Ramosa, which is used to control a kind of parasite plant called Orobanche Ramosa. Unfortunately, this product, it's been three years that there is no way that the product could come into the island. So Armando okay. is suggesting you to ask any question you might do right now, guys. At the cigar factories, they spoke of using the veins of the leaves uh, uh, as a fertilizer. Right, so is there any example of, you know, kind of byproducts of the cigar rolling process to help fertilize the fields? <clears throat> en la fábrica de tabaco, él ha escuchado que, por ejemplo, en el despalillo, tú sabes que se coge la capa, eh, se... Para control biológico se utiliza para hacer tabaquín. It's also an agent of biological control. Nosotros lo estamos utilizando. Which is called tabaquina, and they are using it in here. So you take this bioproduct, you put it into formation, you wait a certain amount of time, and then afterwards you can use it uh, widespread. Yeah. It's basically used to kill some kind of bugs you know, that could be attacking the production. And it's very good to the cultivation of common beans. <laughs> son, son, uh, uh, ricos. Um, what about, I mean, so there's of course a lot of other, you know, countries that are trying to match the quality of Cuban tobacco. Is there anything special in the way that uh, the plants are cultivated here that make them, you know, that help contribute to them continuing to be so much better than what we find in the rest of the world? El suelo. The soil. Yeah. El suelo define el color de la hoja, la textura de la hoja, pero también el aroma. The soil defines texture, color, but also aroma. So the smell. Entonces, cuando hablamos en sentido general, hay que hablar de clima. Clima y suelo. In general terms, you are uh, compelled to always mention the soil, but also the weather. Combinación, clima, suelo. And the combination of the two of them. Y lo otro es la buena práctica de los hombres. And the other thing might be maybe the know-how of all the people involved in the process. The whole cycle, I mean, I'm, 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 I mean the whole complete cycle since until the moment that you have the cigar on your lips. 139 steps. The matter, the camaraderie, the table. And muchas manos. Muchas manos. A lot of hands. Participan mucho. No hay un cultivo en el mundo que por hectárea lleve 4.8 hombres. 
There is no cultivation, agricultural process that can that have to compel to use uh, 4.8 main per hectare. Not at all. No 25 hectares. Por cuatro, cuánto es? 95 multiplied by 4, so we are talking about 360, <laughs> roughly. <laughs> Por eso que es tan importante la especialización de los hombres, para que rindan más. That's why it's so important to get the people trained and highly specialized in order to get them more efficient and also in order to get better yields within the plantation. No, of course, no, 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 clim no. climate change is also the reason for why they are also compelled to be using and improving technology day after day. For instance, he was mentioning about this structure over here. It is called tendal, and it's used to, to make stronger the whole infrastructure of the plantation, you know? So you need to properly prepare all this stuff in order to protect the leaves within. And that's another reason that he, he was mentioning. Climate change, of course, is a factor that goes onto it because we're talking about the stronger winds. In Cuba, we usually we don't have cold. But usually when we have cold before it gets rain, it gets raining. Now, the cold is just coming without rain. And it's all a kind of product of the same, uh, the same climate change phenomenon all over the world. Because of the hurricane, a lot of Cuban bars <coughs> lost the roads. But what they, they, what they did was to organize little groups, brigades of people, workers, not from outside, from here. And they just went together and they were totally, totally uh, uh, addressed towards the, rep the preparation, the rebuilding process of the whole cutting barns. So, so far, they have, they have repaired 30 cutting barns. This is also another perfect example of the no climate queremos, change impact. No que esos daños lleguen, pero lleguen y hay que we, don't want, we don't want to get these damages, but when they come, we need to face them. We can, we always can. After the 27th of September, they had already, uh, they had ready the new ball plants in order to be transported to the fields. Hurricane came, it got what it got. And because of their work, they were able to uh, move this out so quickly and so good that at the end, October was the, he thinks that was October, the decisive month in terms of the final goals of this harvest. He is absolutely convinced that this harvest is going to be the best on his 30 years in this co-op unit. Because, because the trays that are coming to the plantation with the newborn plants in order to be put it into the field, they need to go back to the ceiling in order to get more newborn plants. So, analyzing the logistic process, there is an order for the different resources that you're able to use. First, people, the material resources, uh, also the soil, the natural conditions. But at the end, the combination of all together is that makes possible do not violate the whole cycle and the timing that you need to follow in order to get a proper harvest as the technology ahora, takes. Ahora vamos a ver una de que esto es un reloj. Now, we are going to see a practical example that this process indeed works like a clock. Usted tiene que esta área en dos días. You have to plant this area in two days. But then afterwards, the recollection of the leaves, you need to do it every two days. Because the filling up on the curing bars have to be also in two days. Después está 22 en cura, secándose. Afterwards, it needs to stay 22 days para in a cure barn. Para que entre también out. otro corte que en dos días que llenar. Quiere decir que esto es un reloj. To get then inside another stage of the plan for another 22 days. Si no, las 50 toneladas no viene. So, no there viene. is no possible way that the 50 tons will be produced at the end of the harvest. No llega a las 50 toneladas. So, how much time is, I know that with the sun-grown tobacco that is used in the binders and the fillers, there's quite a lot of, um, elapsed time between picking the bottom leaf and the top leaf. How much time elapses before, again, picking that first leaf to finishing that process of picking? The recollection must start 50 days after planting. Se recolectan las dos primeras hojas de abajo, que son las primeras que salen. Recollection starts with the two first leaves. Mm -hmm. Que ya está, aquí está recolectado. From the bottom. Se llama libre pie. It is called libre pie. Wait, de second stage. It's only two leaves. It is called unimedio. But how many days between the La first stage? Está entre y días de un corte a otro. It's between five and seven days from one uh, stage to the other. But the thing is that as, as soon as you start to do one stage, let's say the unimedio, you need to finish it in two days. For the entire crop? Yes, yes, for every stage, because it has a lot to do with the curing bars process. So Hochi, just to clarify, so once you start picking the bottom two, mm -hmm. all of the 
leaves have to be picked, these bottom two leaves of the entire plantation within correct. two That's days. Correct. And then it's another seven days before you go to the next level. That's correct. And everything has to be picked in two days. That's correct. And then on the next level, is it followed in that same pattern of seven days, seven days? So it's what a total of 28 days between you start and you finish. Yeah. You got and it absolutely right. With sun-grown tobacco, the bottom leaf is used for a different purpose than the top leaf because there's such a long difference between uh -huh. when they're picked. Uh -huh. With shade-grown tobacco, which are used exclusively for wrapper leaves, does it impact how these leaves are ultimately no, used in the production of the cigar, depending on okay. when they're picked? The first two leaves at the bottom, it's almost impossible to obtain any wrapper because it's too small, a little bit of oil. So they'll be used for filler? Most of all. There is no texture, there is no oil. There is no potential to become a proper wrapper leaf. So they will not take these leaves to the cutie bars because at the end you're wasting costs, resources, and everything. So they won't go to the cutie bar. So it means that the most optimal stages within the plant are the middle, the middle, middle part, which are called centros. Centro fino, centro ligero, and centro gordo. The potential for a single plant with 16 leaves must have, should have a yield of at least the 50%. So here we are in Lorazo Pena, which is widely considered uh, the area producing the most desirable of all of the wrapper leaves here in Cuba. Uh, over 50% of the production of wrapper leaves is done in this region. Uh, and this is such a great example of the tremendous care that goes into the cultivation of this plant uh, in order to produce uh, some of the world's best cigars. Uh, this is an absolutely incredible process to see uh, everything that goes into it, uh, not just using the tradition of old world craftsmanship of uh, really working the land, uh, but the combination of technology, which has been integrated into this process in order to increase the yields, which has added durability to the process to help uh, counteract uh, any of the impacts of climate change. And then of course, like everything within Havanos, uh, also to increase the quality of the tobacco that they're producing for the use of their cigars. One of the most incredible and unique characteristics uh, of the leaf that's used in the wrapper is the oiliness and the elasticity. This is uh, one of the most important characteristics uh, and unique characteristics of the wrapper leaf. This is absolutely vital whenever the, the torchadors are rolling the cigars. They need to be able to stretch that wrapper leaf around the cigar itself. Uh, and so one of the interesting characteristics uh, that the gentleman was speaking about is that the first uh, four leaves uh, and the top four leaves don't meet the very strict criteria uh, required of a wrapper leaf. And so the yield uh, normally is, is only about 50% of so. Of the 16 leaves that one of these plants is able to produce, just the middle eight are being used for the purpose of wrapper leaves. From the expansive shade-grown tobacco fields, we now journey to meet the remarkable individuals whose dedication ensure that year after year, the tobacco grown here is the best in the world. We're about to visit Glorious Rodriguez Armas, a renowned independent tobacco grower who has dedicated her life to mastering the art of cultivating Habanos' famous wrapper leaves. Beyond just their growth, Gloria's expertise lies in the pivotal stage of curing and drying these precious leaves. With years of experience and a hands-on approach, she embodies the synthesis of tradition, innovation, and passion found in Cuban tobacco production. First of all, she's giving you all the all the, the welcome. Uh, unfortunately, it wasn't uh, possible to see a plantation on the field because on this time, they have, they have already picked up all the leaves and right now they are totally involved in the curing process and the dry out of the leaves. Muy breve, right? She would like to give you a brief summary of her history in the tobacco industry. In the year 1998, she started in the sorting house of San Antonio de los Baños as a, a single operational worker uh, classifying and opening and classifying leaves, which is basically a, a, 
a process of selection of each leaves considering different characteristics. She said, she said, and I, I believe that she's lying to us. She was really bad at production, <laughs> right? So she tried because she, she, she really liked it, but also she tried to apply for a different job, another different role within the sorting house structure. After one, two years roughly, she was appointed to production director within the whole sorting houses. So she became the person in charge of the whole beneficial process within this structure. In 2000, in the year 2000, she was promoted to general director of the sorting house. 12 años dirigí la unidad. And she spent 12 years running the institution. In 2013, she went to start to work at Lazaro Peña Enterprise as the main specialist in, in pre-industrial process. Back in those days, Yasser used to be a prior producer at the time. So she suddenly decided to try to experiment and to go ahead and become more involved as private producer. Okay, 2016, uh, she got uh, granted with some land for use and joy. This is a legal term for using the land to agricultural purposes here in our country. Then she started as private producer, and this year is going to be the fourth harvest since she became private, private producer. Let me just add something. Before, in 2013, Gloria was already nominated as Premio Banos of the Year in the category of production, 2013. So she has become very, I mean, it has become very useful for her. All the knowledge and all the experience that she gathers when they used to work at the sorting house of San Antonio de las Baño to put it into place now as private producers and in order to get better results in gaining rapid relief for a bunch. So in here, you might see, you, you are able to see what you might heard, which is called calfrisa, and it's no more than a controlled curing bar. With the use of technology, it gets more efficient in order to cure the leaves and to dry out the, the tobacco itself. Okay. okay. And she wants to invite you to cut in to the curing bar so you can witness by first hand how all the process is done. If you consider that you might, you might want to ask any question, please uh, feel free to do it. All right, let's go. So how is the curing barn different than uh, the drying barns that we saw in Huerta Abajo? And what role does the humidity and the heat play into it? It's the fastest process. Más rápido, más controlado, más eficiente para mí creo, ¿eh? Porque... It got more control and it's also more efficient. Yeah. And is this unique to just the wrapper leaves? Para capa. Para los cortes que dan, aportan la capa. Most of all, not, not only exclusively for the wrapper, but also you need to prioritize the most potentially good stages of the plant, because otherwise you are wasting resources, you're wasting salary. This is a previous step before uh, the sorting before house. Before the sorting house, okay. This is the curing bar, mm. which basically the process is about that the rapid leaf gets into the place green, and the scientific manifestation of the change is visually corroborated by the change of the color. Yeah. It goes from the edges to the middle, Going brown and brown and brown. Look at the beautiful leaf there. Mm -hmm. That's gonna be a big 56 for sure. <laughs> and then afterwards, when it's finished, as soon as it's finished, is the moment that all the leaves are collected together and Gloria will have to bring them to the sorting house. Uh -huh. In order of the sorting house, fermenting it again and then selecting the different type of classes yeah. of wrapper. Yeah. Because at the end she will get paid according to the class that she's yeah. able to take. So what are the most important characteristics of her work here to control? <laughs> the thing is that there is a lot of elements that yeah. she needs to bear in mind. Every step is important. Every yeah. element, every action cares. Yeah. Curing bar number 38. Yeah. <clears throat> and um, I guess talk to us a little bit about you know, what we're seeing and why it's so special. There's a lot of quality within these leaves. Las labores de agrícola determinan la cura también 
Of course, all the agricultural la calidad services en la cura quality. depende de las labores de la, de la calidad de las labores en el campo. And it's a principle that the curing process depends on the agricultural skill. Yeah. Now the curing bar is. Con un sistema de que viene por abajo que. Okay. Now the curing bar is in the face of color development, and it is used uh, a humidifying system who goes from the ground. Agua con calor. Which is basically is water with heat yeah. all mixed, and mm -hmm. at the end it helps a lot to develop. Con temperatura de 30 grados. 30, uh, 30 degrees, 70. Yeah. Celsius degrees. That's yeah. the same. This is a very key strategic and important moment. Since this moment until the wrapper is lift, humidity and temperature are just vital. Yeah. Yeah. Because the I mean the one of the most important characteristics of the wrapper leaf is that elasticity. And if it's dried too much and becomes crunchy, then no longer is it able to be used as a wrapper. Exactly. Yes. Yeah. Um, talk to me a little bit about the color. I mean it's been a very challenging year. Uh, for uh, Cuba and for the, you know, for this year's kind of crop. Uh, but, you know, Maria was saying earlier that it, these are amongst some of the most beautiful leaves that she's ever seen. That's right. Uh, the alongside shade of the leaves is, yeah. is really even. The color is really the same from the top to the bottom. Yeah. As you can see, this is a beautiful brown type. In here, you are able to observe the different shades and also you will notice that the tone is the same from the top to the bottom yeah and it goes really shiny with the correct level of, yeah. of oil mm -hmm. peak elasticity so this is just a piece of a piece of, of, of yeah. art right now yeah So I'm here in one of the curing barns. This is the traditional curing barn. Uh, we saw the other one across the way where they use heat and humidity, uh, but this is uh, how it has always been done, the traditional way on this side. I'm here with Ana Lopez, a legend within the cigar industry, of course, been working with Hunters and Frank Cal for a long time. And before that, with a long and very, um, you know, very kind of successful career with Havanos. So talk to me a little bit about kind of where we are, what we're seeing, and how this plays an important role. Well, into this is a curing balm, but it's a traditional way of curing the, the leaves. And you can see here, this leaf has just came from the harvest. Mm -hmm. And the first step is this lady sewing the, the leaves and putting the cuches in this mm -hmm. thing there. Yeah. And afterwards, they will be put in the position yeah. of curing. And it's very important in this case because they have to keep an eye of the temperature and everything. Yeah. It's the difference with the control yeah. curing. In this case, it's taking the double of time. Twice as much time. Twice. Yeah. twice. Exactly. Is there a, a different effect on the outcome of the wrapper leaf? No, well, no. Uh, the only effect is that they are yes, quicker, but because it's controlled the temperature and all the parameters are under control, probably the uh, yield is, 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 well. is, 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 is higher. Yeah. Is higher. I suppose that. Yes. Yeah. But one of the most important characteristics of a wrapper leaf. Uh, is that oily texture, that elasticity, yeah. uh, but then ultimately the color that uh, you know really has helped make Havano cigars so legendary. Uh, how does this process play this a process role? This process is key. Yeah. This process is key. The curing, the perfect curing, is so important because that will be the first step in the proper color to avoid any sort of uh, difference in the wrapper leaf. That will be essential, yeah. really, really very important. I mean, one of the things that I'm struck by as we tour the farms and as we see the factories is how time is not rushed. It's allowed to really take its time. Uh, and, um, you know, this is a great example of that. Yes, where the password here is patience. Patience. Yes, yeah. exactly. I mean, yeah. I think it's one of the uh, most amazing characteristics of a Havano cigar yes. uh, is the fact that the entire process has not been rushed, it's been nurtured. Even to enjoy the cigar. Yeah. It's okay. a process of, you know, to take yeah. your time and really enjoy the cigar. Well, it starts from the beginning. Yeah. Always is that. Uh, how much time will the leaves spend in this natural curing barn? 
Uh, well, if in there is, for example, 25 days, here is 50. 50, okay. And are they, uh, you know, do they start at the top and then work their way down yeah, as they dry? And, and, and they have to change constantly. Yeah. And to go down and, and so yeah. it's, it's very complicated. And that's yeah. why the control is uh, made to replace this uh, traditional yeah. process, mainly in the wrapper list. Yeah. I mean, it's really incredible just the amount of experience that is required because ultimately this is a natural process. Yes. Uh, every leaf, every crop, every year, the climate is different. Uh, the, you know, the leaves, the tobacco leaves themselves are different. And just the eye and the hands and the intuition. It's so, so important, so important because it's a tradition of hundreds of years that people have just keeping yeah. that information, that know-how mm -hmm. transfer from generation to generation. And it's because this one is not any book to yeah. teach that. Yeah. It's just, you know, the expertise of someone, yeah. someone else that yeah. does them. I mean, it's, it's, it. it's truly an inherited oral tradition yes, yes, passed yes. on from generation to generation, and in many cases from father to son or from mother exactly. to daughter. Yeah, 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 yeah. yeah. I was born in Pinata Rio, and I, uh, that was of the task that I used to do. Oh, really? To sue. Oh, wow. When I went to school, yes, it's yeah. a really very difficult task yeah. and it takes it some time. You know, like, really important. like so many things, it's made to look easy, uh, but there's incredible skill incredible and skill. finesse behind exactly. every step. Exactly, yes. And, and it's part of the Havana. I mean, yeah. that tradition is one of the key elements that yeah. uh, uh, together with the soil, with the climate, the tradition and the expertise of the people yeah. that work in the Cuban industry yeah. is a uh, element that is part of the success of Havana yeah. and the difference. It yeah. made the difference. Definitely. Yeah, I was told by someone else that uh, the tobacco was the only thing uh, that the Spanish, the colonialists, did not bring to the island of Cuba. It was already here whenever they arrived. Yes, yes. So, I mean, it, literally, you know, the, the tradition of growing tobacco uh, is as old as, you know, this country before it was even a country. Yes, yeah. it is. It is. So and being, we are very proud of that. Yeah, absolutely. Well, there's a lot to be proud of, for sure. Yes. Uh, being back here, you know, of course, you're living in London now, you're working, working with hunters in Prankau. Uh, is it special for you to be back here, to be uh, back in a curing barn? It brings me so many memories, yes. It's really, really special. Yeah, yeah. wow. Well, thank you so much, Anna. A it's such, a, a such an honor to be here. Oh, it's an honor. At the core of every Habano cigar is a tale deeply rooted in the Cuban people, a narrative not just of tobacco, but of a people bound by tradition, by land, and by a shared history embedded in every leaf. From the sun-kissed fields of Pinar de Rio to the hands of the devoted farmers that cultivate this sacred plant, the tale of the Habano cigar is a testament to the generations of craftsmanship, dedication, and an unwavering spirit of the Cuban people. As we trace the journey of these beautiful cigars, the cigars that bring those who smoke them so much pleasure, we're reminded that behind its rich aroma and unparalleled quality, is the soul of the Cuban people and a legacy that stands timeless.